All right, today I want to talk about a great web development IDE, Integrated Development Environment, called Brackets. Now this is the open source IDE created by Adobe. So it's the open source alternative to Dreamweaver. If you don't have a Creative Cloud license, Brackets is completely free. Brackets.io, this is the website. Just download. They have it for Mac, they've got it for Windows, and I believe they've got it for Linux as well. So fantastic tool. Very straightforward, simple to use, but I'm going to show you some of the keyboard shortcuts and a few of the features that will get more allow you to get more productivity out of it. Alright, so here I have a sample web page open in brackets so you can see what the interface looks like. Inside here we've got two sections in this left hand menu. Working files. These are the files that you have opened. So if I've double clicked on a file it's opened here and it'll appear in this list as well. If I was to create a new file I can go to the file menu and create new here. I can right click down inside here, new file, main.js, there we go. So now I've got main.js in this list as well as here. We can also work on two files at the same time. This little tiny menu, the square with the arrows pointing in the two, two different directions, allows us to split the screen. So the white working area here, we can split it vertically so there'd be two files side by side or horizontally, one on the top, one on the bottom. So there it is. And you can see here now I've got left and I've got right. So if I put the CSS file down here on the right, and I select on the left the sample.html. There, I can work on these two files at the same time. Down at the bottom, this is your current project folder. So for brackets to understand the relationship between the files, for example, this link, knowing where that CSS file is located relative to my HTML file, we need to have kind of a, a base starting folder. This is my project folder right here. And you can see I've got lots and lots of different folders open. This is just the current one that I'm working, or not open, but available to me. These are ones that I've opened in the past. I can just go in here, say open folder, pick point at another folder, that'll be my current project folder. Or you can come in here and as you open more and more and more, you'll see that there's more and more that will appear in this list. Okay, so that's the split screen. That's the current working files and your current project folder. So this is all the files, and these are the ones that you're working with currently. Now, over on the side here, we also have Live Preview, this little lightning bolt. If I click on that, what it's going to do is it's going to open a copy of Chrome that was packaged with brackets, and it's going to launch a node-driven web server. So it picks a random port number, on your system uses the 127.0.0.1 IP address which is your current computer, your home computer, everybody's current computer. And this is the file. So inside my project folder that's what this address right here is pointing to is that project folder. Inside there there's sample.html. If I were to change this to CSS slash um, name.css there we go, there's the CSS file. And this is all being driven through the web server so that if you have to do things like test JavaScript functionality with Ajax, that's going to work just fine. Okay, so that is the live preview. You can turn that on or off. This is the extension manager. So there's lots and lots of plugins that are available, free plugins for brackets that help extend the functionality. So these are, this is the list of available plugins. You can see that there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons. This is the list of ones that I've got currently installed inside here. I'm going to install one called Emmet, which I highly recommend. I'm actually going to make another video about the Emmet plugin. So there's Emmet, and I'm going to install that. It downloads the zip file and unzips it, expands it, and I close. Now I have Emmet, and you can see up in the top here, Emmet has appeared. So I'm going to make a video about that. There's a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts that 
help you with your functionality even more. Now, some of the built-in keyboard shortcuts that we've got inside of brackets. If you've got a line and you realize, oh, I've got this in the wrong place, and you want to move it up or down so we can shift things around um, with Control Command and then the arrow keys. We can move lines around in our code. Command and the letter D lets us duplicate lines, which is sometimes very useful. Just going to do Control Z or Command Z to undo that. All of these keyboard shortcuts that I'm going to be talking about in here, in brackets, you can find them inside the menus. You'll see over on the side, these are the keyboard shortcuts here and over here, this list right here. So it's just a matter of um, knowing which what these symbols are. So the big fat arrow pointing up, that is the shift key. The angle with a little line here, this is the alt or the option key. The arrow pointing up, this is the control key. And this is the command key. Now this is on OS X. On Windows, some of these are slightly different, like there is no command key on Windows. There's a, a Windows key. Um, but some of the combinations are slightly different on Windows because of system shortcuts that they've got. But go inside of this menu and you'll be able to find them. All right, so we had duplicating line with command D. We had moving lines up and down. If you want to be able to type on multiple lines at the same time, so creating multiple cursors, we can um, add the cursor by, there we go, shift, alt, and the arrow keys can go up or down. And then you can actually move the, I've got three lines selected right now, shift, alt, and again, or shift, option. Click anywhere to get rid of the multiple cursors, but if I did select multiple lines, I can now type on all these lines at the same time. Useful when you want to add attributes into multiple lines. Okay, uh, commenting, something that you do quite frequently. I've got a couple of lines, command and then the forward slash lets you comment that out. Um, inside JavaScript, if you've got multiple lines of, of code, <laughs> code, I can be on one of these and comment that one line if I've selected multiple lines. It will toggle the comments on or off. So command and then the forward slash where the question mark is. That's for the single line comments. If you want to use the multi-line comments as opposed to the single line comments, we can do um, alt, command, and then the slash. So selecting these multiple lines, alt, command, slash, and there you go. You can see I've got the slash star star slash. Same thing in the CSS and inside the HTML. I took all these lines. Alt command slash. There you go. I took that whole chunk. I want this whole block right here commented. Yeah, just like that. Alt command forward slash. Indenting and outdenting, uh, if for some reason you want to be able to do this, um, there's a keyboard shortcut for indenting and outdenting, but I find all you need to do is tab or shift tab, and I can select multiple lines and do tab, shift tab to move them back and forth. Uh, hiding the side menu over here. 
Command Shift H. H for hide. Hides this side menu. Sometimes you've got a lot of code on the screen, you want to hide that menu just to free up a little bit of extra space for you. So you can do that. Uh, okay, so comments, indenting, outdenting, duplicating lines, creating uh, the comments, creating cursors on multiple lines, uh, moving lines up and down. Control, command. Oh, we already did that one, the control command. And the arrows up and down. Hiding the menu, if you need to increase or decrease the font size, just the command key and then the plus or the minus to shrink. Inside here, we installed the, uh, the plugin for Emmet. There's also an option for themes. There's lots of themes if you want to change the interface inside of here. Uh, I just have mine set to the default that comes with brackets, but you can uh, change everything about the uh, presentation of your code here. You can change the background color, the fonts, uh, the colors, the font size, all those things. It's, it's Brackets is built with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, so it's running on Node with HTML and CSS inside and using CSS to style all the different parts of the interface. So there are lots of themes, and they're built just with uh, JavaScript and CSS. Okay, um, I think that's about everything. Uh, we can take chunks of code. You'll notice there's little arrows at some locations in your code. These let you expand and collapse little chunks just to help tidy things up. If you've got a, an HTML file, you've got three, four hundred lines in it, and you want to hide big parts of it so that you can focus on what you're needing to do, the arrows on the side allow you to do that. And you can do this in the CSS, you can do this inside the JavaScript as well. Just wherever it recognizes for CSS and JavaScript, it's the curly braces. For HTML, it's nested tags. So if I had a whole bunch of stuff inside the paragraph, I'd be able to collapse the paragraph as well. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to brackets with some of the keyboard shortcuts. Please take a look through these menus. You'll find lots of those uh, shortcuts listed. And depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac, they are slightly different. So just be aware of that. Uh, and keep an eye out for the bracket on Emmet for some of the keyboard shortcuts you get with that to really bump up your productivity.